Hey guys. Um, so no one's watching so far. That's fine. Um, I just put my laptop in so I didn't die. Anyway, um, no one is here yet. Um, but my plan was to go over the questions that went along with the seventh and eighth grade packet. Um, Lena, you're here, so we're gonna go over seventh grade first. Thanks for making that decision for me. Um, a reminder to, I know it's only Lena here right now. Oh, and someone else just joined. I don't know who it was. Um, either go in the chat box or like email me so I know you guys are here so I can give you credit for being here because that's important. Um, okay, Lena, let me write your name down. Okay, so I have Lena, but there's four other one, other people watching. Oh, Nathaniel. Okay, hold on, I have to write all your names down. Okay, so let me find what we're doing. Is that Katana or is it Dimitri? Because you guys use like the same account sometimes. But I will write Katana's name down, no matter who it is. Okay, so um, I posted a video yesterday. Um, we're gonna do seventh grade first and then go over eighth grade probably around 6.30. Um, but if you are in sixth grade and you have any questions, oh, it's Lucas. Okay, um, but Lucas, if you are in sixth grade and you have any questions, you can also ask questions about your own packet, the grammar packets, whatever you have questions about, it's up to you. Um, but because I do a live stream on Mondays and Fridays for the sixth graders, I was hoping to do my live stream on Wednesdays for seventh and eighth. But again, sixth graders, if you're here, like you can hang out, that's totally fine. Um, so anyway, the questions for 192 through 195 start on page 195. Um, I posted a video of me yesterday reading those few pages, so I'm not going to read them now. Um, if you need me to reread them, to you go back and find the video I posted yesterday. Um, we're gonna go over these questions now. Um, so 1A on page 195, what sort of text structure does the author use to organize the text? Um, Lucas, you can watch the video, it'll be on Friday. Tomorrow's Thursday. Okay. Um, 1A, what sort of structure does the author use to organize the text? A, cause and effect, B, compare and contrast, C, spatial order, or D, time order? Um, so cause and effect, um, that could be an option because it's one that you guys reviewed in these packets earlier. Um, B, compare and contrast, I also think that could be an option for you guys because um, this entire thing is literally comparing and contrasting a rainforest to a tundra. Um, spatial order, spatial is like the things around you. Um, so I wouldn't do spatial order. Um, and then time order is like chronological and this doesn't really follow like a timeline. So I wouldn't do time order. So I choose between A or B. Um, so then one B, what evidence supports the answers to part A? Um, A, the text tells what created rainforests and tundras. Oh, okay, bye, Lena, sorry. <laughs> um, B, the text discusses the history of rainforests and tundras. C, the text concentrates on the location of rainforests and tundras. Or D, the text switches back and forth between rainforests and tundras. Um, so the text does not really tell us what created rainforests and tundras. Um, it goes back and like talks about how like I think it was a hundred million years ago what the rainforest looked like, but that wasn't its creation. Um, the text discusses the history of rainforests and tundras. It does. Okay, Lena, that's fine. <laughs> um, the text also covers the history, but it doesn't just go over the entire history the whole time. It focuses on other things. Um, the text concentrates on the location of rainforests and tundras. Not really. Or D, the text which is back and forth between rainforests and tundras. Um, I went with D for that one. So that should help you answer 1A. But the answer for 1B is D. Um, so 2A. 
2A, paragraph 5 begins, tundras, on the other hand, are among Earth's coldest, harshest biomes. How does this sentence connect paragraph 5 to the preceding text? Um, so you're trying to link paragraph 4 and paragraph 5. Um, so A, it introduces the contrast. B, it indicates a passage of time. C, it extends a previous concept. Or D, it acts as a concluding sentence. Um, focus on tundras on the other hand. Specifically focus on on the other hand. That'll give you your answer for 2A. 2B, what words in the sentence support the answer to part A? A, tundras, B, on the other hand, C, are among Earth's coldest, or D, harshest biomes. Um, I just gave you the answer for that if you were listening. So um, moving on to 3A. This sentence appears in paragraph 10. The high rainfall causes nutrients to leach out of the soil quickly. What is the meaning of leach? A, fall out, B, burn off, C, evaporate, or D, drain away. Um, so again, the sentence is the high water or high rainfall causes nutrients to leach out of the soil quickly. Um, if you know the like definition of like the animal leech, that will help you. Um, but I wouldn't say it falls out of the soil because the soil's on the ground. It can't really fall out of the soil. Um, burn off. We're not burning anything. We're actually using water. Um, evaporate. Um, again, it's rainfall. There's no sunlight. You can't really evaporate without sunlight. Or D, drain away. Um, that's when it'll work too because it's kind of where it creates like a little ravine and all of the nutrients come out. Okay, 3B, what words in the sentence are clues to the answer to part A? A, high rainfall. B, causes nutrients. C, out of or D, soil quickly. Um, high rainfall doesn't tell us anything. B, causes nutrients. Um, that's like in the middle of a sentence, middle of a thought. So. No. Um, C, out of, that won't possibly work. Or D, soil quickly. Um, again, it tells us how fast it moves, but doesn't really tell us what, how it moves. Lena, what is this? Oh, my God. Oh, no, I didn't mean to delete them. I'm sorry, Lena. Um, okay. Moving on, Lena, you can put them back in if you want. Um, 4A, this sentence appears in paragraph 12. Besides being home to so many species, rainforests take in much more carbon dioxide, CO2, than they release. What is the meaning of the two in CO2? So two carbon atoms, two oxygen atoms, half of an oxygen atom or half of a carbon atom. Um, I wouldn't choose either of the half ones um, because it doesn't, there's not like a fraction. It's just a number two. Um, and so I would choose between A or B for, for A. Oh, that's cool, Katana. Um, okay, so moving on to 4B. What word in the sentence is the best clue to the answer to part A? A, rainforest. B, carbon, C, dioxide, or D, release. Um, Ethaniel, this is over the informational text packet. So this one that looks like this with the big earth on it. Um, so moving over to, where was I? 4B. Um, one of those words has like a prefix with it. Um, keep that in mind when you answer 4B. That's how I figure out my answer to it. Um, I know seventh graders, you guys went over prefixes and suffixes with Mr. Nelson last year. Um, okay, so 5A, which of these answers best states the author's point of view? A, readers should help conserve Earth's biomes. B, readers should go visit Earth's natural treasures. C, readers should learn about either rainforest or tundra. Or D, readers should learn how to protect themselves in warmer weather. Um, <coughs> sorry. Readers should help conserve Earth's biomes. Um, it does talk about acts or things that are taking place in our government to protect the biomes. Um, B, readers should go visit Earth's natural treasures. Um, it does ask you which one would you rather visit. Um, C, readers should learn about either rainforests or tundras. 
I wouldn't really say that's the author's point of view. That's just what they're doing. Um, or D, readers should learn how to protect themselves in warmer weather. It never talks about that. Do not pick D. Um, 5B, in which section of the text do you find clues to the answer to part A? A, origins. B, benefits for the rest of the world. C, changes by humans. Or D, what would you pick? Um, if you, it depends on the answer that you choose for 5A. Um, so the answer for 5A will affect your answer for 5B. Hello, Madison. Um, so I am not really going to help you guys with 5B because I don't, I don't know what answer you guys have. Um, okay, moving on to number six. In paragraph 13, the author explains how the tundra captures and holds CO2 acting as a balance against production of the gas elsewhere. Why does the author explain this process? Um, so again, flip back to paragraph 13. Paragraph 13 is on page 194. Um, and then uh, why does the author explain the process of a tundra capturing and holding CO2? Um, focus more so on the balance part of that like what does it give us by doing this um okay so moving on to uh seven on page 197 find the following technical terms in the text create it create credit period sorry um rainforest canopy and decompose then use clues in the nearby text to define each word um so i just looked back in the text and found these words um, and just put either like the definition that was provided directly in the text or based off what I knew. Um, so for example, I put decompose means to die and break down or deteriorate um, because I already know what decompose means. Um, but I used the text to help me figure out like what was happening to things that were decomposing, animals were dying and then decomposing. So it's when something dead breaks down. Um, number eight, analyze how the first paragraph of the text contributes to the development of the ideas in the text. Um, so think about when you guys were writing your like research papers or like the bug papers. Um, what is your first paragraph when you write an essay? It is a blank to the rest. Um, think about like your thesis. Your thesis is supposed to map out everything that you're gonna write about, so keep that in mind um, when you look at why we include the first paragraph. Um, number nine, explain the author's purpose for including the sections benefits for the rest of the world and changes by humans. Um, let's see, hold on, I have to read my answer for this. Okay, so benefits, um, focus on the specific examples that they give, like what specific benefit benefits do we get from um, the rainforest and then the changes by humans look at that section and see what it's taking away so kind of um, contrast those two because they talk about two completely different things um, so number 10 the chart below lists the sections of the text so um, beginning introduction middle origins climate vegetation animal soil and N, benefits for the rest of the world, changes by humans, and which would you pick? Um, more so focus on how we transition from the beginning to the middle to the end. Um, so I will give you the answer to the first part. I put the introduction quickly and briefly introduces the topics that are in the middle. So the introduction sets up the origin, climate, vegetation, animals, and soil. So if we get to that part, like we kind of have some background info. Um, we have heard those words before, they kind of register in our head. Um, but you will need to answer from the middle to the end and how it kind of all comes together. Madison, you're crazy. Um, okay, so then I think that just leaves us, yeah, with two more pages. Um, so if you guys turn to page 198, you'll see this chart that I'm going to show you really fast so you can't see my answers. Um, so it says support a claim. In this unit, you've read an article about the ozone layer, earthquakes, water reclamation, and Earth's biomes. 
Think about the claim below and how these selections might support that claim. In the chart, list key details and important points from the text to use as evidence. On a separate sheet of paper, write a brief essay in which you use the information in this chart to support the claim. Be prepared to discuss your ideas. Um, one, we're not going to discuss our ideas because we're just not going to do that. Um, you guys are stuck at home. There's no one really to discuss it with. Um, two, so it says on a separate sheet of paper, write a brief essay in which you use the information in the chart to support the claim. If you guys can fit it on this piece of paper, you can do it on here. All I want you guys to do is when you pull a quote from the text to go in the box, just give me like a one or two sentence explanation as to why the quote you pulled supports the claim. So I will give you um, the answer for, what are you talking about, Lena? Oh, like we could do like a blue jeans thing to discuss. That's actually a really good idea. Um, I will talk to Miss Vaughn about that. Um, probably won't be something that we will do until after spring break though. But I really like that idea. Like that's a really good one. Thank you for that. Um, anyway, so going back to page 198. So it said, I'll give you the answer for the one that I had for earthquakes. So I picked a promising option for reducing earthquake damage is using earthquake proof building methods. Um, I cited my evidence that's on page 182. So the claim is the Earth's environment faces many challenges, but there are just as many ways of helping it. Um, so I use this as like your example sentence. So listen carefully. I chose this quote because the claim talks about the Earth's environment facing many challenges. In the earthquake essay, a promising option for redu reducing earthquake damage is using er earthquake proof building methods. This quote addresses earthquake damage. Um, and then it also goes on to address how we can use earthquake proof building methods to help sustain our earth. That was a really long explanation. You guys can shorten that. Hi, David. Um, but that kind of helps you guys see what I mean by like defend it in one or two sentences. Um, I guess I'll show you my paper but it's probably going to be backwards. So if you guys see, I just, my camera is terrible. Um, but I included a quote, and then I, down at the bottom, you can see I put the page number of where I found it. Um, goodbye, Madison. So that's all I want you guys to do for that in the box, and then on a separate sheet of paper, write a sentence or two about how the quote that you chose Defend the claim that's in the middle of all those boxes. Um, so if you guys have questions about that, let me know because I know this part can be kind of confusing. Um, the other day I posted a video for someone where I did like a screenshot of my computer. Um, that might be an easier way to explain this. Um, we're all still getting used to the online teaching. So if you would think that that's easier. Okay, so Madison, good for you. You are excused, I guess. Um, and Nathaniel, so listen, all you don't necessarily have to write an essay. Um, so all I want you to do is look at the claim. So it says the Earth's environment faces many challenges, but there are just as many ways of helping it. So if it helps you, write the claim on like a separate sheet of paper at the top. And then you are going to write a quote from each one of the articles that it lists that supports that claim. And then I just want you to write one or two sentences about how the quote you chose supports that claim. So you might probably have like 10, eight to 10 sentences total, um, but it doesn't necessarily have to be like in an essay format. You can just kind of write it down like you're taking notes. Does that make more sense for you, Nathaniel? I don't want you guys writing like a full page on this. Like I don't think you need to write that much. I'm going to wait for your response, but I'm going to move on. Um, okay. So then it says return to the essential. Okay, cool. That does make sense. If you still have questions, though, feel free to email me. Um, so return to the essential question. Why is it important to consider an author's point of view or purpose? Um, in small groups or as a class, discuss the essential question. Um, maybe next time if we get one of these packets, we'll do a blue jeans thing. But for right now, we're not going to discuss it. 
Um, think about what you have learned about discovering the author's point of view or purpose in a text. Um, so one of the things that I put, because you have to infer this, so you kind of just have to pick up on it, um, is that the author's point of view, they usually only give you what they want you to hear. So it's usually really like skewed and one sided. So Mr. Murray, we know Mr. Murray hates the dentist, but if I absolutely love the dentist, which I don't, I'm going to write an essay that tells you all of the great things about the dentist. I'm not going to include any of like these super terrible things that can happen at the dentist's office because that doesn't support what I'm trying to persuade you with. Um, so keep that in mind that some of the information that you read can be skewed. Um, think about how this is not Dark Souls. This is also the seventh grade stuff. Um, think about how the author's point of view can affect what the reader thinks about a topic. Use evidence from the four text in this unit to answer this question. Um, so focus on the evidence from the four text in this unit to answer the question. You guys are just going to find, again, quotes to help support why it's important to consider the author's point of view or purpose. Um, I say just pick two of the four texts. You don't have to do all four because they give you this teeny tiny little space to write. Um, okay, so we are on the last page of the seventh grade packet that we're going to do today. That's page 199. Um, so it says guided instruction. Knowing common Greek and Latin roots can help you determine the meaning of new words. See if you can recognize a new word's root, the core of the word. Some words have more than one root. Um, so moving on to the chart, it says root, cellar, geo, kilo, hand, plus, and techno. The origin, Latin, Greek, Greek, Latin, Latin, Greek. Um, and then the meaning of cellar is quick, geo is earth, kilo is thousand, hand is spread, plus is more, and techno is art or skill. Um, so it gives you examples below, hemisphere, Greek, hemi is half, sphere is globe, and audible, Latin, odd is hearing, ible is capable of. Um, so sometimes you can, if you know the Greek and Latin root words, which I know seventh and eighth graders went over with Mr. Nelson last year too, um, you guys can get an idea of the definition of the word. Um, so then use the Greek and Latin root words from the chart above to complete the sentences below. So the car, AC, blank, aided around the corner and out of sight. Um, I thought this was really easy. I just kind of used what word made the most sense. Um, so I put accelerated. So you guys can fill in the root word there. Um, buying one blank gram of flour will leave me with a sir blank. Um, so buying one, what is the only like measurement or one that can be measured? I put kilo, so buying one kilogram of flour will leave me with a sir, um, and then I just put surplus because it leaves you with more than you need. Um, number three, I did not realize the branches of the tree would X blank so far. Um, think of how something can grow or in the direction something grows. Sorry. Um, I did not realize the branches of the tree would expand so far. So then moving on to independent practice at the bottom of the page, what other words with Greek and Latin roots can you find in the close reading section? Write them on another piece of paper. Add any words you know from these roots. Then write three sentences on the lines provided below using some of the words on your list. So throw all that out the window because I found something that I think is easier and better to do. If you already did this section, that's fine. Um, because I know some of you guys are working faster than like I'm making videos, that's really okay. Um, the way that I did this is I went back in the text, the so pages 192 through 195, and I picked three words, three, um, that I knew had a Greek and Latin root, prefix, suffix, anything like that. Um, so, for example, one of the words I found was on page 194, I found the word production. Um, duct, I underlined it. Duct is a Greek, and Latin, Greek or Latin root word. I'm not going to tell you the definition of it because that's kind of what you guys are supposed to do. 
Um, and then I put an example sentence. So the production line was very busy last week. So I just want you guys to find three words in, you can actually do the whole packet. Find three words in the entire packet that have a Greek or Latin root. Um, write down the word you chose, the page you found it on, and then just give me an example of your own sentence. Do not use the sentence the word is in. Give me your own sentence. Um, but that is all I have for the seventh grade packet. Um, I know there are three pages left in that packet. I'm going to post a video tomorrow of me going over um, the, I'll read the two sections that are on page 200, and then I'll go over the questions on 201 and 202. Um, so the week you guys come back after spring break, um, I'll probably go live again if anyone still has any questions by Katana. Um, on this packet, I will still answer them. Um, I also said, too, if you guys are working on this over spring break, I'm checking my email once a day. Um, so while I might not get back to you as quickly, like, I'm still checking it. Um, but I'm going to post a video of me reading the rest of the packet tomorrow and then going over the questions. But again, if you guys have questions before I live stream again, which will be in two weeks, because next week is spring break, um, keep in mind that that's there. Like, that's an option if you have questions and you want to wait that long. Um, okay, so I know I'm a little early, but I guess we'll start the eighth grade packet if I can get to the right page. Okay. Um, so if you are by opinion, if you are in eighth grade or if you're a seventh grade or sixth grader, um, reminder to let me know that you are watching so that I can give you credit for watching. Um, because why would you want to lose out on super easy points? Um, so far, some of you guys left already. I have Katana, Lena, Nathaniel, and Madison for seventh graders. Um, David and Lucas popped in briefly. And then Alex, I saw that you are here, but that's all I have so far. Um, but again, when you guys, when we do these like live streams and stuff, either email us or let us know that you're here so we can give you credit for coming and doing the activities. Um, I feel like I'm going to wait a couple seconds because I told someone that I was starting at 6.30 for the 8th graders. So just hang out for three minutes, two minutes. I don't have any questions. There's two of you here. I don't know who's here. Someone told me they were leaving. No one. Are you guys like excited for spring break? Because like, you can't really go anywhere. I wasn't planning on going on like vacation or anything, but I was hoping to do fun stuff with my friends. Um, but I'm probably going to just take my dog to a new park every week, every day, not every week, and go for a walk because parks are the only thing that are open. Um, Alex, are you still in here? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, there's three of you now. Wait one more minute to start the eighth grade stuff because, again, that's the time that I told someone to come back, and I don't want to start without having everyone that wants to be here. Sorry, that was my pen, if you heard that. I don't know if you did. Okay. Um, I guess I'm just going to go ahead and start because, oh, it's Jacob. Jacob, I haven't heard from you in two weeks. How's it going? I just went over the seventh grade stuff, so you missed that. Um, but you can rewatch it when this video gets posted when I'm done, or honestly, I think you can rewind it while I'm still going live. 
Um, but Jacob, I'm glad that you're alive. Um, okay, so we are going to start going over the eighth grade packet. I did the same thing for the eighth graders as I did the seventh graders. Um, I posted a video of me yesterday reading 192 through 195. Um, and then we are going to go over the questions. Um, we'll probably finish up early because I don't think you guys have as much to do. Oh, no, I actually, like, ripped a whole page out of this that the eighth grade doesn't have to do. Um, We'll get to that in a second, though. Um, so, yeah, we will probably finish up early. But if we do finish up early, I'll stick around for a little bit. Because if anyone has questions about, like, the grammar packet, um, which all of you got, or if you're in a different grade than eighth grade, you're just kind of coming in late and you have questions about your grade level packet or the grammar packet, we can go over that, too. That's fine. Um, okay, so starting on page 195 of the eighth grade packet, this one with the scientists on it. Um, 1A, what is the meaning of the word tissue as used in paragraph 9? Um, so I flip back to paragraph 9, which is on page 193. Um, I'm trying to find the sentence that it is in. Oh, however, an x-ray image can reveal if the patient has a tumor if it is of a different density than the surrounding tissue. Um, so it says, A, a soft thin piece of paper, B, a group of cells made up of the same material, C, an image created from electromagnetic radiation, or D, a type of disease. Um, it is not a soft, thin piece of paper because they're talking about the density of like a tumor. So I would not think tumors are made out of paper. Um, B, a group of cells made up of the same material. Um, B could be an answer because a tumor is a bunch of cells. Um, C, an image created from an electromagnetic radiation. Um, so this can be kind of confusing because in this section they're talking about x-rays, but tissue is something that you x-ray. Tissue is not part of an x-ray. Um, or D, a type of disease. Again, um, I guess a tissue could be part of a disease, but we don't have like tissue disease. We have tumors or cancer. Um, so keep that in mind as you answer 1A. 1B, what phrase from the text supports the answer to part A? A, very detailed. B, bone is broken. C, cellular material. Or D, certain di diagnosis. Um, so a very detailed picture. Um, I don't think that's the correct answer because we're not talking about images. I told you that C wasn't the correct answer and A would support C. Um, B, bone is broken. Um, that could be an answer because um, bone is a material, but bone doesn't necessarily, necessarily have tissue. Um, C, cellular material, um, that is a type of tissue. Or D, certain diagnosis, um, that doesn't really define tissue because, again, tissue is not part of a certain disease. So 2A, what is the purpose of paragraph 9? A, to provide an expert opinion. B, to explain why x-rays are frequently used. C, to explain a limitation of x-rays. Or D, to contrast x-rays with CAT scans. Um, right off the bat, A and D you can throw out because they never interview an expert in any of this, um, in this essay. Um, and then D, um, we haven't even talked about CAT scans yet, so you can't compare the two if you haven't discussed it. Um, so I would choose between B or C for 2A. For 2B, what phrase from the text supports the answer to part A? A, does not give a very detailed picture of the body. B, it is easy to see the break in the bone. C, can reveal if a patient has a tumor. Or D, same density as the tissue that surrounds it. Um, so depending on whether or not you pick B or C for A, your answer will differ for part B. Um, so I'm not going to help you guys with that one because I don't know the answer everyone's picked. So then moving on to page 196. 3A. When does the patient swallow radioactive material in the process of creating a molecular image? A. After the CAT scan detects emissions. B. When the computer creates the image. 
C, before being scanned, or D, while the doctor reviews the images. Um, so I would go back, let's see, where do we find this? Trying to find the, okay, so it, your answer for this is in paragraph 20, which is on page 194. Um, so I suggest you guys reread paragraph 20 um, because the answer is really clear. That's all I'm going to tell you because it just jumps right out of you and you don't really have to read that part in this paragraph. Um, 3B, what phrase from the text supports the answer to part A? Um, again, if you reread paragraph 20, it'll help you answer that. So I'm not really going to give you guys any help with that. Um, again, though, if you are still confused about it, please email me or go in the chat box, whatever works best for you. Um, for A, what is the author's point of view toward medical imaging? Um, a, it is dangerous. B, it is a great technology. C, it is too expensive. Or D, it is boring. Um, so looking at A, um, it's not really dangerous. Nothing is ever really talked about being dangerous. Um, it talks about some, I guess, like if you are in, I think it's an MRI, like you can kind of feel claustrophobic, but there's not like, you're not going to have like brain bleed because you sat through an MRI. Um, B, it is a great technology. Um, I agree with this statement because I think it supports the author's point of view because it gives you all these different types of technology that we've created and we continue to create. Um, C, it is too expensive. Um, the author never really discusses the cost for these things um, because I don't think normal people really care how much a CAT scan cost because we're not buying those machines. Um, or D, it is boring. Um, D might be your own opinion. You might think it's boring, but I don't think that is the author's point of view. Um, so keep that in mind when you answer 4A. Um, 4B, what phrase from the text supports the answer to part A? Um, A, amazing advancement. B, electrical discharges. C, cannot distinguish, or D, are called slices. Um, again, I'm not going to help you guys really with 4B because it depends on what you answered for 4A. Um, again, though, if you do have questions, email me, go in the chat box, whatever. Um, so 5A, what is the author's purpose in writing this text? Um, A, to inform readers about the dangers of medical imaging. B, to entertain readers with wacky stories about medical imaging discoveries. C, to inform readers about the benefits of medical imaging. Or D, to persuade readers to avoid medical imaging. Um, so I don't believe it's A. Because, again, it doesn't really talk about the dangers of medical imaging. It just talks about what it does for us. Um, more so the benefits, not the dangers. B, to entertain readers with wacky stories about medical imaging discoveries. Um, there were no wacky stories or examples. It just kind of told you the history of the types of medical imaging. C, to inform readers about the benefits of medical imaging. Um, I believe it did this because the whole thing is what can an MRI do for you? What can an x-ray do for you? What can an ultrasound do for you? Um, or D, to persuade readers to avoid medical imaging. Um, again, it doesn't really list any like risk or serious health benefits from um, medical imaging. If anything, they help you um, if you do have a previous medical condition. So moving on to 5B. Um, so A, radioactive material. Um, the radioactive material is talking about the like pill that you have to swallow to do, I believe it's the CAT scan, MRI. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, so while radioactive material normally sounds like something terrible, um, it's not because it's something that you have to do in order to go through the process of figuring out what's wrong with you. Um, B, today, fortunately, um, I would focus on the word fortunately for that one because it's just a weird section. Um, C, accidentally swallowed a coin. Um, again, that talks about something that you can do and how these things like benefit you. Um, so that could, I guess, be an answer. Or D, cut you open. Um, again, that's just talking about like the introduction, about like the two options you had 
before medical imaging. Um, so I wouldn't select D, cut you open. Um, so moving on to number six, which sentences in paragraph 12 help develop the idea that ultrasound scanning gives doctors a different way of seeing body parts from other imaging technologies? Um, how do these sentences develop this idea? Okay, so um, what is different? Jacob, I'm talking to anyone who's listening, so you. Um, so look at how ultrasounds, what kind of technology ultrasounds use versus the um, type of technology x-rays use. Um, it also, oh, um, and then how do these sentences develop this idea? So what does it go into detail about is what I would focus on. Um, so moving on to number seven on page 197, read the sentence below from paragraph 15. An x-ray machine mounted inside the device then emits x-rays as it rotates around the patient. What is the tone of the sentence? How would the tone of the sentence change if the author had written the words gadget, spews, and goes around instead of the words device, emits, and rotates? Um, so the tone is kind of like the feeling or like emotion you get while you're reading it. Like, is it serious? Is it funny? Does it make you sad? Does it make you nostalgic? Um, that's, you're going to pick like one word to describe the tone, maybe one or two words. Um, and then describe how the tone would change if you changed out those words. Um, because words like gadget spews and goes around are a little funnier than device emits and rotates. So number eight, what is the author's point of view toward whether MRIs or CAT scans are better? How do you know? Um, this one you have to look back in the text for it. They give one reason why CAT scans could be better. I'm not going to tell you the reason why. You're going to have to find that on your own and include it. Um, because for the how do you know section, that's where you have to find text evidence to back up your answer. Um, and then what conflicting point of view does the author acknowledge? How does the author respond to it? Um, so the conflicting point of view is that most people think MRIs are better. But again, you guys need to find the line where the author responds to it. Um, number nine. Why does the author explain how doctors diagnosed internal issues over 100 years ago at the start of the article? My dog just walked in, if anyone cares. Um, so why does the author include the intro that he does? Because it seems really dramatic to be like, oh, you have a stomach ache, like take this medication and you'll be fine. Or like, hey, I think you just have a stomach ache, but like we're just gonna cut your stomach open. Um, think about now if like, Winston, stop. Um, if you guys were to get like a stomach ache now, um, or I'll give you guys the example. So I had to get my gallbladder removed four years ago, I think. Um, and they were able to just do an ultrasound to see if my gallbladder was full or not. Um, but before, like if I was around 200 years ago and I was like, yeah, I think it's my gallbladder, like they would have to cut me open and like look at it themselves and remove my gallbladder probably. And then if I kept having those issues, like I would be out a gallbladder and I would be in pain from surgery. Um, so keep that in mind and why the author includes this. Um, so number 10, write a summary of the article for someone who has not read it. Do not include your own opinion or any information you may have known prior to your reading. Um, so what I did for this, is I looked at the um, titles throughout. So like radiography, ultrasound scanning, computed uh, axial tomography. Um, look at that kind of stuff and summarize it that way. Um, I'm not going to summarize it for you because I know it's something you guys can do on your own. Um, okay, so good news if you are in eighth grade. This entire page, page, what is it, 198? Yeah, 198. Um, I didn't really love these questions. I thought that they were phrased kind of weird um, or we hadn't gone over them in school before, like kind of set you guys free to work on these packets. Um, so you do not need to do either of the two prompts on page 198. 
if you did do the prompts, you will receive extra credit for it because I know some of you guys are working faster than I'm making videos. And again, that's totally fine. Um, work at your own pace or whatever pace works best for you. Um, I know a lot of you guys are bored so you're doing your schoolwork because you don't know what else to do. Um, but again, if you are in eighth grade, you do not have to do page 198 of your packet. If you want to do it for extra credit, you can. Um, I just didn't love the question, so you don't have to do them. Okay, so then moving on to page 199. Uh, guided instruction. If you are unsure of a word's pronunciation or its part of speech, or if you want to verify the meaning you have inferred from context, you can find the information you need in a reference source. Reference materials include dictionaries, thesaurus, thesauruses, and glossaries, and they exist in both print and digital formats. Read the example dictionary, glossary, and thesaurus entries below for the word harness. Um, I prefer to honestly use the digital like dictionaries and stuff because they're updated almost daily, um, while the like hard copy print ones, sometimes they don't even have the word you're looking for. Um, so keep that in mind for this activity or if you ever need to use a dictionary. So dictionary, harness, noun, a piece of equipment made of leather straps that connects a draft or working animal to something heavy that it must pull such as a cart or wagon. We need to tighten the harness or the horse may get loose. Or the second definition means to, is a verb, means to gain control of something in order to use it. Let's harness our creativity and focus it on one idea. So then glossary, harness, to bring under control in order to make effective use of, or thesaurus, synonyms, gear, equipment, or trappings for noun. For verbs, synonyms are curb, tame, govern, and secure. Antonyms are disconnect, pre, liberate, or unlock. Um, so remember, synonyms are things that have similar meanings. Antonyms are opposite. So then use the dictionary, glossary, and thesaurus entries above to complete the sentences below. The word harness can be used as a noun or a, um, look at the definition. If you look at the number two in the definition for harness, that'll give you the answer for number one. Um, number two, the letter N in the word harness is pronounced in the blank syllable. Um, if you go next to the word harness, it has parentheses and it says har Ness. Um, so har is the first syllable and ness is the second syllable. So keep that in mind while you answer number two. The word liberate is a blank for the word harness. Um, so go down and look at the synonyms and antonyms and where you find the word liberate, that's going to be your answer. Number four, the sentence, the harness was old and the straps were fraying uses the word harness as it relates to the blank definition given for the word. Um, look at, try to find the definition that specifically talks about leather straps and that'll give you answer number four. Um, so moving on to independent practice. Reread paragraph 20 of The Wonders of Medical Imaging on page 194. Use context clues to make a preliminary determination of the meaning of the words molecular and radioactive. Then, using a reference resource, write the meanings of the words as well as their pronunciations and parts of speech. Speech. Um, all you guys have to do for this is um, you can go back into the text um, if you want to. That's totally fine um, to help you figure out these words. What I want you guys to do, though, is for sure look up the dictionary definition of molecular and radioactive. If you go to Google and type in molecular definition, it'll give you the definition. Um, the thing to keep in mind, though, is based off the sentence in the text, it could use a different definition than it presents to you on Google. So keep that in mind. Um, so you're writing the definition. Um, write the pronunciation. So if you look up molecular next to the word, it should be something in parentheses that has a, a couple of syllables. Um, that's the pronunciation. And then the part of speech. So molecular is a noun, verb, adjective, any of those. Um, those are your parts of speech. Um, and then for pages 200 through 202, 
I will make a video tomorrow of me reading those and going over the questions. Um, same thing I told the seventh graders. If you guys have any questions about those, um, not next week because next week is spring break, but the following week. Um, so let's see, what day is that? April 15th, I'll be going live again um, from 6 to 7 on that Wednesday. Um, if you guys have any questions about either of these pages I'm going to go over or um, something in your grammar packet, something earlier in this packet, um, whatever you guys need help with, I will answer. Um, but that is all I have for the live stream. Um, I think there's only two of you watching right now. So if any of you guys have questions, let me know um, and I will answer them. Let's see. Oh, never mind. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys. So if you don't have any questions, um, I guess I'm going to end a little bit early. Um, if you guys do have questions because you're watching this video late, please either email me or comment on this video. Um, I do try to check the comments on the videos I post once in the morning and once in the afternoon. Um, sometimes, though, I miss the notifications. So if I don't get back to you, like, feel free to yell at me. That's fine. Um, but, yeah, that's all we're going to do for today. Um, if you are in sixth grade, I will see you guys Friday at 11. If you are in any of the other grades, um, I will see you guys in two weeks. Um, I hope you guys enjoy your spring break.